Hi, this is Katie Fehrenbacher with Gigome TV's Green Overdrive Show. And we're here in a little alleyway in downtown San Francisco, and we're talking with Michael Keating, who is the CEO and founder of Scoot Networks, which shares electric scooters. Michael, what's up with that? We think it's hard to get around San Francisco, and it's really hard to get around any city. And now there's an opportunity to use these really affordable green electric scooters and connect them up to people's smartphones, make them easy to find, easy to ride. And we think it's about the fastest, cheapest, funnest way you can get around the city. Okay, so Scoot Networks is a startup that you guys put together uh, in the Bay Area, and you're going to be launching this, uh, this service kind of in a couple months in the summer, right? Yep, exactly. Yeah, we're going to roll out with some corporate partners this summer, and then we're going to expand to the public early next year. Okay, and tell me about how the iPhone app works. That's kind of the heart and soul of the whole uh, service, right? Right, so we want thousands of people to be able to share our scooters, but we don't want to have to give out giant key rings. So we have worked it out so that an iPhone or really any smartphone can open and turn on one of the scooters. And it does that by connecting to the scooter and also connecting to our server. And then it, um, once, you, once you turn the scooter on, it turns into your dashboard. So instead of just giving you a little like needle, like a normal uh, speedometer, it gives you a map like you're used to on your iPhone. It tells you how fast you're going, what the battery level is in the scooter. And uh, just, a, just a more kind of current transportation experience. Okay. And so, I mean, everyone's heard of car sharing with Zipcar and City Car Share. So why scooters and why electric scooters specifically? Okay, so scooters because they're small and they can be parked just about anywhere and they're really cheap. So we can put lots of them in the same space that a Zipcar could go. And because we, it's easy for us to put parking for them around the city, the service is eventually going to work more like a bicycle sharing system than like car sharing. Initially, it'll be round trips, but eventually we'll be able to do one-way trips like you'd find in like a European public bicycle system. And that's really because the scooter is small enough that it's easy for us to have lots of parking so that it could be picked up in one place and dropped off in an empty place somewhere else. So that's why scooters. And then on the, the electric side, an electric scooter that doesn't go more than 30 miles an hour is basically considered a moped. And anyone with a normal California driver's license can rent one. So that means that we get a scooter that's kind of as fun and easy to ride as a Vespa, but it doesn't have the combustion and all the compl complexity of like a normal gas engine. And so it makes it easier for people to use it and for a broader class of people to use it. Okay, and you guys are benefiting from the fact that the, um, the market for electric scooters in China is kind of exploding right now, right? Yeah, it's, the scooters are cheap, but um, they're not cheap because they're made in China. They're cheap because they're made for China. So the main new way of getting around a Chinese city right now, if you live in a Chinese city, is an electric scooter. And there's making about 10 million of them every year, almost all for people in China. So we are just buying some of those and we're, we're buying kind of high-end ones and we're upgrading them for the American market and we're bringing them over here and deploying them in a shared system. Okay, and what's this one? Tell me about this model. Um, this model uh, costs us $900. And we then um, we add our electronics to it. We add our smartphone dock, and we um, it goes um, goes up to 30 miles an hour, and it has um, a 1.2 kilowatt hour battery. So it'll go about 25 miles in San Francisco, depending on how many hills you're climbing and how fast you're going. Okay, so these are short trips around the city. Basically. Exactly. Yeah, it's not for um, for sort of beach trips or like you know runs to the East Bay, it's all just around the city. We're really, um, we see ourselves replacing car trips within the city and uh, maybe the occasional taxi ride or bus trip, just like a, a few miles each way. But if you really wanted to ride around San Francisco for the afternoon, it'll go 25 miles. So you could go back and forth across the city a couple times. Okay, and your strategy for launch is to work with companies, right? Before you launch to consumers? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just makes it a little simpler for us to roll our network out. So we're there a lot of also tech companies and co-working spaces in San Francisco are excited to have a new way of getting their employees and members around because it's such a pain to, to commute in the city. So we're offering them this as it's almost like a company car, except it's a scooter. Yeah, very cool. Um, can you walk us through how it works? Yeah, happily. Okay. So this is our app, the Scoot app, right there. And what it does is it helps you find a scooter. So it's looking for scoots. And right here, there are a bunch of them. Ooh. So we're going to zoom in, and we're going to pick one. Um, oops, not, not that one. Hold on a second. Scoot 16, uh, reserve that. Uh, whoop, hold on. Just getting a little, it's a little touchy. Great. So we reserve it, 
And now it's telling us that we should dock it in the dock on the phone, so we'll do that. And just pop it in here. It's connecting to the scooter, and great. Now it's your dashboard. So now that it's connected, it's ready to go. And all you do is press the start button. And the scooter is unlocked and it is powered on. So you've got about two thirds of a battery and um, just uh, you can throttle it and you can see. Um, so the 58% the, is how much battery you have left? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And that's your speed. And that's your speed. And, and that's, that's how, how long much you've time? been riding. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And then when you're done, you just, uh, just end your ride. All right, so how did you come up with the idea to use the iPhone as the control mechanism for the scooter? Sure. We think that smartphones are how we're getting everything in our lives now. It's how you find food, it's how you talk to your friends, it's how you look up information, and, and you increasingly use it for transportation, like finding out when the bus is going to come. So we thought it would be great to just bring that experience together with the scooter, and also in a way that would allow us to take advantage of all the great things that are built into smartphones and make it a part of our service. Like if we designed our own custom hardware and the next generation of smartphones that come out, it would certainly do cool things that we hadn't thought of and it would make our hardware look kind of dated. So we thought if we want to stay current with all the new technologies that people are, are using every day, we should just build those technologies right into our service. Okay. Can I test drive it? Yeah, of course. All right. All right, so Michael and I are about to take the Scoot Network scooters for a ride around downtown San Francisco. All right, you ready? Yeah. Okay. You get your cup brake covered, and then just like a little, just a little, just a little twist. Oh, yeah, there you it go. Is hard. Ooh. Oh, it is a lot of pickup. It's huh? a lot of pickup. All right, there we go. How do I look? So Michael and I just rode around San Francisco. Uh, we took it up to the maximum 30 miles per hour. It felt really good. It's uh, the 100% torque does make the acceleration very fast, but uh, it's a really smooth ride uh, once you start going. Great. Well, thank you Glad very you much, Michael. We really appreciate uh, the time and good luck with Scoot Networks. Thanks for checking us out.